Guys, I'm sorry about me saying Overlord is Cloverfield that video. I just want to move. I'm trying to move on with that. It's still Overlord. Yeah, it's a theory video. I'm trying to think about it. But I'm going to try my best to make some good videos on these days. Okay. I am really sorry about that. Really am. It might have not worked out. Oh that well, then I thought it was gonna go. But hey, at least I was trying to make you guys happy. Maybe get, maybe still give you guys some hope. It was still gonna happen. But no, that did not happen. Nope. I really am sorry. Trust me, I really am sorry. I didn't know that I would check you guys a lot off. I never wanted that to happen. God, I'm really screwing up right now. Okay. Mm. I really am sorry. Sorry. Ugh. Now I keep thinking about the video, it kind of does suck. I really am sorry I did that. I really am. I didn't. I didn't want to go all that far. I really didn't. So what's next? What video we're gonna watch instead? You know what? Let's give it Overlord and give it some progress. It's gonna be like a real good movie, okay? But I'm gonna still be. I'm. But I'm still gonna have bad suspicions of the of that movie. I'm still gonna have a little suspicious things about that movie. New Overlord. Maybe. I will come maybe try to make some theory videos. It might be Cloverfield, but I'm not sure. So I'm just my spell man. Maybe, maybe I'll even make my own cheese or it. That would make sense. But if I don't, oh well, you'll see why. You'll you'll know why. In a second. You'll know why. I'll tell you after the video. <laughs> J.K. Andrews.
just... Well, it does look, a movie, look like a good movie. Well, that's the last video I was making. I, my, I wasn't really looking at it. I was just cleaning my room first. I wasn't really looking at it. So, you can't blame me for everything for that. I didn't even have time to look at the trailer. No, really, I never did. So, what's next for my list? Oh, wait. Apparently, we got another AJ Amber movie. Yay. Yeah, I'm not saying that thing ever. Just upload to the porn hub. Where it belongs, okay? Put it up to the porn hub where it belongs. On that, I was talking about um, Happy Time Murder. Because they already released that on YouTube. I was like, put it on the porn. Well, where it belongs. Okay, I got... Oh, hold on. Hold on. I'm going to do something real fast. I'll be right back. There's going to be a couple teaser trailers in a little while. Let's get ready. Okay. company that bought a Star Wars Episode 4 Part 2 comes two other movies that are edit, copy, paste of each other. The film's about some guys who decided to use a camera to make a homemade Spike Lee joint. At the beginning of the movie, the main characters gather at the main character's house for a celebration. Kinda. I only call it a celebration because all of the main character's friends are there and they're dressed up for the event and stuff. But the guest of honor doesn't seem too excited about it and just sits there like he forgot to put on deodorant. The last person to show up to the party pisses off the owner of the house and we catch them arguing outside. The main character in the film is supposed to be going away on a trip, but before he even packs his bags, something goes horribly wrong all of a sudden and he and his friends have to run for their lives. After running away, he and his buddies are like, hey! I wonder what that was. And go to higher ground to find out what the noise was. It sucks because they can't really tell if it was dangerous or not because the explosions are in the way. It's not until they turn up the volume on the TV they get a better understanding of what's going on. Things get more intense after the blackout and they look for places to hide. It's one of those nowhere to run, nowhere to hide type situations so none of their hiding places seems to be working at the moment. They try the convenience store and that turns out to be a bad idea. They go through some underground tunnels and the tunnels are even worse than the convenience store so the safest place to hide is nowhere basically there's a part where the main characters visit an electronic store so the main guy can make a phone call to his love interest in the movie and if it were me and i just found out that an alien attacked my city i'd probably call will smith before i called my old lady but once again that's just me people try asking for help from the <laughs> police officers but the police in this movie only help you if you're dead already after that, military vehicles start popping up left and right. Animals are the first to sense when something's bad about to happen, and all of them start heading in one direction. They're all running in the same direction. They're like they're running away. Like they all just 
ran away in every direction. I'm not exactly sure what that means, but I know when the situation's about to get real when I see it. The main character's breaking in there into private property, and the soldiers come in like, freeze or I'll see you, with flashlights and whatnot. They get confiscated by the military, which isn't actually a bad thing, because the soldiers are pretty chill sometimes, and even let civilians film in front of their top secret military operations. The main characters get taken to a military base for the wounded, sick, etc. Someone at the base is infected, and the alien is inside of him or her. He's in me. As I am in hell. They die after the alien miscarriage. We learn that the commander is a real a-hole. Like a real big a-hole. Because he doesn't know what the monster is capable of. And doesn't want to leave anybody behind to risk the safety of the other soldiers and civilians. Oh, M. God. I take it back. The main characters are the real a-holes for begging to leave in the first place. The boy is still worried about his love interest who's still out there. So he convinces his friends to leave the base to go and find her. They get to where the girl is and he knock-knock jokes himself into the room. When the door swings open, they're inside and outside at the same time because there's a huge hole in the room. They eventually find a girl and she looks like she's dead, but she's not. She was just taking a long nap. Someone comes face to face with the monster and instead of running, you want to know what the good guys do? He starts monologuing. He starts monologuing. He starts like this prepared speech yeah. about how feeble I am compared to him, <laughs> how inevitable my defeat is. After the monster starts killing people in their group, the lovebird starts running and the guy starts thinking to himself, if I'm going to die, I'm going to go out with a smile. He starts to try to cop a fit on his girlfriend and moves way too slow and the monster drops everything on everybody so the movie ends before he could even make it to first base. Those are 24 reasons these movies are the same. You agree? Yes, no, maybe so? If not, politely share your thoughts in the comment section below and click the subscribe button for more 24 reason videos. <gasps>
TJ, you know, you get one hit show and you just become an animal. Amazing. I mean, I'm certainly not advocating that everything needs to be never before seen high bro originality. Originality at this point in a world where everything has been done more so relies on taking an idea and just doing something different with it. And that's exactly what Cloverfield does right. J.J. Abrams fluctuates between two creative extremities, the classical Hollywood syndrome of semi-nostalgic pandering and experimental storytelling that happens to be very divisive. Either method is fine and subject to taste and attitude. One services a conventional demographic of moviegoers, and the other cultivates a fan base that likes to discuss and dissect artistic practices, but will inevitably alienate other audiences. Cloverfield just perfectly slots between the two and blends what I think are clever ideas to tell a fun, audience-pleasing spectacle of a story. Now, I don't think it's some tour de force by any means, mostly due to rather uh, hollow characterization. It's right, it's right! Start running right now! Start running now! Run, 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 run! run! Oh, that startled me! That was really startling! But that organic cinema verite approach they take is quite a nuanced way of creative problem-solving. Take this big, generic monster movie you've seen plenty of times before, fuse it together with a modern, dynamic, found footage style, and create a profound sense of identity through a unique and innovative storytelling perspective. Hey, you guys, I have it on tape. Rewind it. What do you want? Here, here, let me rewind. Let's give you an opportunity. Yeah, but I don't even speak the language. That's the beauty of its structural simplicity. It's coherent, clean, and doesn't get bogged down in trying to be deep, which can easily lead to a lack of genuine focus. According to Abrams, the last truly genre-defying American monster movie was King Kong around 75 years ago, and the core intention with Cloverfield was to basically create America's response to Godzilla. And not that Godzilla we'll forget ever existed. That's a lot of fish. Yeah, thanks Matthew. But you know that mystery box TED talk everybody and their mother drones on about where Abrams talks about withholding information as a way to develop viewer intrigue and curiosity and mystery being the key to imagination? Well, something I've noticed that's sort of underpinned in his talk and appears prominently in his work isn't exclusively how mystery should psychologically function, something which many filmmakers like Hitchcock, Kubrick, Wells, and even Sergei Eisenstein spent most of their careers trying to define as a state of being and a state of mind. Instead, with Abrams, mystery is also broadly represented as spectacle. The thing is that, that it represents infinite possibility. I find myself drawn to infinite possibility and that sense of potential, and I realize that mystery is the catalyst for imagination. Now, it's not the most groundbreaking idea, but when I started to think that maybe there are times when mystery is more important than knowledge. I started getting interested in this. And so I started thinking about loss and the stuff that we do, and I realized, oh my God, like mystery boxes are everywhere in what I do. Echoing those filmmakers, he is right that withholding information adds emotional engagement. In the case of Cloverfield, mystery functions to keep you locked in the same confusion as the characters, a state of mind. But that mystery also functions as a necessity to the storytelling, a state of being. The spectacle comes in the form of the simple perspective that's given to Cloverfield. It's exciting and emotional because you're consumed by the bewilderment and curiosity of what is happening in a very intimate way, as opposed to some mundane search for answers. The fun of it is the thrill of it, and the ambiguous marketing campaign I covered in the last video adds a richness to the events because fans have already fueled enough theories and conspiracies to make you feel desperate to know what's going on. But the mystery works simply because you don't have those answers, and Abrams says this himself, the answers aren't the point, the journey is more impactful than the resolution. But of course, this is where things get complicated. Mystery as a spectacle has a problem. Spectacle is about style, not substance, and evidently the longer it sticks around, gradually it begins to fall apart. Cloverfield is a short, swift experience. Once it ends, the... Yeah.